Live from the rooftop of the Herman London Real Estate Group in beautiful downtown Maplewood, it's the St. Louis Realtor Podcast with your host, Adam Cruz. Welcome, welcome everybody to the St. Louis Realtor Podcast. This is episode 13 and we're working here from the rooftop of the Herman London Real Estate Group in beautiful downtown Maplewood, Missouri. And we're excited this week. We have a special guest in the studio and her name is Susie Osterloh, and she is the publisher and the owner of the St. Louis Homes and Lifestyles magazine. Mm-hmm. Just sort of introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you got to be the owner of St. Louis Homes and Lifestyles magazine. Well, after working for um, several owners of St. Louis Homes and Lifestyles back in uh, well, St. Patrick's Day, 2011, I made an offer and purchased the publication. So now I own it, and which gave me a little more freedom to, you know, buy the paper and get it printed and keep everything local. So. Okay. So while I was out on the streets of Dogtown drinking green beer, you were making a big business deal. Yeah, back in 2011. So now St. Patrick's Day is a great day for us. So we yeah. have another reason to celebrate. Uh, just one more reason to celebrate. Yep. So were you working there before that? Oh, yeah. I was the publisher for 15 years prior. So it was a real easy transition. It was almost like a um, McDonald's franchise, uh-huh. you know, where I oversaw everything and had complete control over everything except I had to buy the paper and the printing and had to go through budget reviews with a big corporation. So it was a real easy transition. To okay, just so own before it. it was owned by a big corporation like not locally owned. Right. Okay. Is this the first business that you've owned? No, actually, um, when I got out of college, I owned a um, plant business. I got my degree oh, wow. in botany. Okay. Yeah, kind of crazy. Okay. But I um, got out of college and worked for a small um, plant store in Cape Girardeau, Missouri. And then when I moved to St. Louis, I started my own. So I would go into um, restaurants and hotels and would decorate with plants, tropical plants. And then I would sell them a maintenance contract where they would pay me monthly to take care of to the plants. To come and take care of them. Oh, okay. Yep. That's so smart. pretty nice, yeah. Do you ever put like a St. Louis Gardens, you know, kind of sections in the magazine? Oh, yeah. If you look at the front of the magazine, the little catchphrase up here is urban, suburban, indoor, outdoor. Oh, okay. So every single issue, we've come out nine times a year, we've got a beautiful garden. We feature a beautiful space at the Botanical Gardens. And oh, then wow. we have another department called The Dirt where we've got local landscapers. We ask them questions like, what's your favorite perennial? What's your favorite flowering bush? And so, you know, with a big movement of people entertaining and hanging out outdoors. So outdoors is in You're every covering single. covering that too. Yep. Well, I wasn't planning on asking you this right now, but tell me what your opinion about bamboo is. Because I think I'm a bamboo lover, but I don't have any yet. Oh, yeah. Well, I've got bamboo in my office on you the do. floor. Okay. I think bamboo is great. It holds up really, really well. And um, I don't know. I, I like hardwood because I've got hardwood in my floor, right. in my home. But the bamboo is r- really nice. What about as a plant to put in like my backyard to oh. kind of make a fence type of thing? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's good, too. It's like a good um, privacy screen. Uh-huh. And it can go crazy, wild. You know, you have to keep it in check. But no, it's a great privacy screen. I was just reading about bamboo because I want to make sort of a fence about it. And then I found these articles that are like, it's terrible. We're banning it in our city because I right. guess it does. It grows as wild and crazy as I want it to be. Yeah, so. they call it an invasive plant, where it'll just it it grows underground and it just goes it goes crazy. Okay, so w- what does the publisher do? Does that mean you get to choose all the articles that are going to be in there? You don't write. Do you write any of the articles? No, very rarely. Sometimes I do. As a as the publisher, I oversee the editorial staff, the design staff that designs the magazine, Uh and the sales portion of the publication. So I ever see it all, but there's other people that get right down into the nitty-gritty. Okay, so publisher and owner, in your case, is the same thing. Mm -hmm. But in a lot of ways, it's sort of almost like the same thing. I mean, even when you weren't the owner, you were sort of acting as the business head. Oh, absolutely. Publisher, president, I guess, is a similar type of word. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just give me an overview of the magazine if you want. I noticed you guys have real estate section on there, mm-hmm. you, right? There's some homes on there. Mm-hmm. You have different, obviously, lots of different things about interior decorating. Um, so just tell me a little bit about it. Where can I buy one? You said it comes out nine times a year. 
Right. Well, you can buy it at um, Straub's and Schnooks and Deerberg's and some of the um, bookstores that okay. are still open. And then, but the majority of our readership are subscribers, so they pay for it. And, and there's you mail about, it to them monthly. Mail it to them. Mm-hmm. There's about eighteen thousand of those, and Holy we sell. Cow. Yeah, and then we sell about five thousand on the newsstand. So yeah, our goal is just to inspire our readership, give them ideas on decorating their home and making it just more comfortable and fun to entertain. It seems like it would be a good gift to give, like at Christmas if I would give uh, my past clients a subscription to your magazine, something like that. Oh yeah, it's great. Do you notice a bump in subscriptions around the holidays? Oh yeah, there's a lot of people, uh, realtors like to do it. Some of our clients, we give out special pricing uh-huh. and that they send multiple and we like to call it the the gift that keeps on giving all year long. Right, every month. You know, my yeah. parents have given me some magazines before, uh, Entrepreneur Magazine or whatever, yep. and every month I'm like, oh yeah, that, you know, mm-hmm. which is neat. You guys also have like an uh, website, right? And mm-hmm. I guess you have to oh, yeah. nowadays. Mm-hmm. How do you choose what goes on your website versus the magazine? Does the website get what's coming in the magazine or totally different stuff or how does that work no i mean right now the website um has a lot of the same information as that's in the current issue but then you can go to the website and you can get all the back information so our website is very content heavy Uh it goes back years and years i mean actually next year 2016 we'll be celebrating our 20th anniversary holy cow congratulations thanks thanks so you know then we have web profiles on the website and that's like getting your portfolio like let's say you had a web profile on Uh our website you could have all the homes that are up for sale um, and then change it constantly. I was on your website and I mm-hmm. was kind of clicking around and at the top there is a section for real estate mm-hmm. and there's some homes on there. Got it. I was curious, do you guys just kind of like look at all the homes that are for sale and you find like the really spectacular ones or how do you choose, how Which do I ones? get my listings on there? You know, how does that work? Oh, well the web profiles, you pay for that. Okay. okay. But, and But the content in the magazine, um, what we do is we just find out about beautiful homes or... Um, or in re- are referred, and we'll go and scout the homes, uh-huh. and then that's how we feature the homes that are in the magazine. And you must have some of the best photographers. We do. Right? Yeah. Is it always a home that's for sale, or not necessarily? I guess you just find out about a beautiful home. They're never for sale. Oh, okay. Yeah. They're they're re- they put too much attention in it. Why would they want to sell? Well, I we're afraid that we would probably be taken advantage of by the realtors because uh, they they love it like if a house has been featured in our magazine uh-huh. and like maybe a couple of years later it goes on the market they usually have the magazine there oh yeah I've folded seen that. out Absolutely. yeah that it's a beautiful home but yeah no the houses that we feature in the magazine are not for sale you probably know all the coolest people in town that have all the neatest houses yeah right with the well, best decorating yeah it's it's fun i mean we we go in i mean this week alone we've been in four houses you know, scouting them, uh, seeing if it'll work in the magazine. And we, and it's hard because a lot of the homes are just drop dead gorgeous, but we're always looking for something that's just really unique, something that we haven't done okay. already. So, and that's hard. And then we have departments throughout. So, you know, we've got before and afters. We've just got all kinds of different things that our readership can be inspired by. I, I love, everyone loves the before and afters, I guess, right? I know. Yeah. Because they're amazed by what mm-hmm. can be done. And just through this job, do you have the vision? Can you look at a a home that has maybe deferred maintenance or whatever and say, this could really be something special? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and before and afters are so popular that last year we dedicated our September issue so that the entire issue is before and afters. So we usually have two big okay. home features, and that's all about just beautiful homes but now everything is in that september issue it's all before and after people can see better you know that saying a picture is worth a thousand words yeah, right yeah i'm curious because you guys have the magazine you have the website you have this relocating in st louis this is a separate business in general right yeah this little guy he's digest size and really the only way you can get it is through realtors or the larger companies here in town okay. so it's basically meant for newcomers to st louis mm-hmm. and it covers you know each of the neighborhoods what the flavor is oh, and right. um, all the schools so that you know when you move to st louis first where are your kids going to go to school where are you going to live and then while you're looking where are you going to get something to eat 
So have I seen this at the airport or no? No, uh uh-uh. Never has been. I feel like I saw it somewhere, but I've probably seen it at other real estate offices or something like that. Just out and about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but you also have events. Yes, we do. Do you do that because you just like to be as busy as you possibly can? No, we do. We partner and we sponsor different events um, in order to help people in the design or building industry. And plus, our readership enjoy going to events and they just love it. It's in, it's just in their blood. I guess if they love reading your magazine, they probably have some sort of similar traits to the other people that are coming to your events, right? So they probably get to meet people that have things in common with them, right? Oh, yeah. And then there's a lot of networking going on at the events, too. Oh, yeah. I need to start coming to your events. Yeah, they're fun. Tell me what you have coming up here. Well, um, April 18th, we're sponsoring uh, the Junior League of St. Louis, their home design tour. Ooh, what's that? Yeah, well, it's got five different homes, and it's, it's just, it's a home tour. So you pay X amount and go at your leisure to visit these homes, and there'll be designers in each of the homes, and they'll tell you why they did this or what brand of lighting is that and and help anybody with um, design ideas mostly so then like you know you've got this uh, savvy surroundings you know go there and oh wow I like a particular chair then you can go there and maybe they've got the chair there that you want these are privately owned homes Mm -hmm. that you guys knew of that like had incredible design and then they are going to have the people in there that help them with the design. Yeah, well, we it, it isn't our deal. We're just a sponsor, so okay. it's the it's the junior league that went out and secured the homes and the sponsorships, and then we're a media sponsor, so we're promoting it in the magazine because our readership will want to attend this. Okay, so it's Saturday, April eighteenth, from mm-hmm. nine to three p.m., and yep. there's five homes. Yeah, and can they come to your website to get more information? No, they'll have to go to the junior league okay so they can just google junior league of mm-hmm. st louis and find out more information about it okay yeah so you guys are one of the major sponsors because mm-hmm. this is totally in your wheelhouse i guess you support you got it okay and so what's this other event you have here uh the next event that we're um sponsoring is the ethan allen which is a furniture store in chesterfield valley and they're having a party where they're giving out a great looking book uh, for inspiration, and that is May 12th. And there'll be food and beverages and all kinds of things going on in the store. May 12th at Ethan Allen mm-hmm. in Chesterfield Valley. Yep. Ethan Allen's just a store where you can buy furniture and mm-hmm. paintings and rugs and whatever. Yep. Yep. Okay. And then they've got interior design, uh, complimentary interior design. So the designers will help you. Oh, they do? Yeah. Okay, you know, I had a client ask me the other day. we are I have a client. They're looking to buy a nice home in Ladue or Warson Woods and this mm-hmm. type of thing. And they one of the homes we looked at needed a total rehab, right? Uh-huh. Total rehab. And they said, do we hire a designer or do we hire, you know, and I'm explaining to them that obviously we'll hire a contractor who's going to come out and do the work. And it seems like a lot of the contractors kind of like to maybe try to act like the designer or something and say, oh, you know, you can put your refrigerator here and let's move this wall. But... Can people also hire Ethan Allen's designers, as an example, just to help them figure out what furniture to place, Mm -hmm. not necessarily how to like where to put walls and what where to put light fixtures and stuff? Well, right, yeah, that's how probably it is at Ethan Allen. But then you've got some of the bigger interior design firms Uh like Castle Design or Directions and Design, where they also provide architecture. Oh, they'll come out and say, yeah, they've got an architect on staff. And so they'll help you with your, you know, knocking down walls and make sure that it's not a, yeah, that's it. Load bearing. Yeah. And so a lot of them have that. And then they have construction crews in addition to the designer and really the best design team when you're going to remodel or do a major renovation is to have, start with the team. That's the architect, the uh, builder or remodeler Uh and an interior designer. Okay. Because then they know, okay, I know I want to put this here and I want, you know, all the pretty things, how to have, you know, the light sockets in the right place. If they're going to put a sofa in a particular place, they might want a um, outlet on the floor. There, right. and Yeah. It, it, I would have to consider you the St. Louis expert on interior design. No, no. The reigning queen. Right? <laughs> so I guess if someone's looking to either rehab a house and redesign it, or if they're looking to build a house or whatever, whatever they're trying to do, a great place, I guess, for them to do would be... Of course, start with your magazine, Mm -hmm. right? And just kind of get what their general taste is, right? Like, do they like modern? Do they like country French or whatever? 
Yeah. Right? Good job. <laughs> thank yeah. You, thank you. I could thank the Reese's <laughs> for teaching me about country French, but... So then once they kind of get the gist of that, like what's going to make me comfortable, then they can start going to these stores and actually having more of an informed conversation, I guess. Right. Well, in our magazine, maybe three or four times a year, we've got a section called Designers in Demand. I don't know if it's in this one or not. Oh, yeah, it is. So you can read these little bios about all these different oh, design firms. Okay. So there is where you you can find the interior designer that does multiple applications but many of them are the designer and then they bring in the construction crews they've got crews that they've been working with already okay so they're not just interior designers but some of them are some of them just stick to the interior design part you know you bring in your own everyone's different in how they like to tackle their projects and i guess by reading through these different profiles you can kind of see who maybe fits your personality and that type of thing right yeah well you'd interview them you know just like when you're going to interview a real estate agent well, you, do. you know you see which one you feel the most comfortable with because it's going to be a project that's going to be dear to your heart and so you've got to make sure that there's a good rapport Okay, that makes sense. Cool. Mm -hmm. This is neat. Yeah, you've got different designers on here that we can choose from. Yeah, see, and then there's just bunches of them. Well, I have another question for you. Lorraine and Judith, you know who I'm talking about? No. They, I think they wrote some different articles, uh, at least on your website, about food stuff. Okay. You know who I'm talking about now. Yes, yes. And is this what I imagine to be the best job in the world? They oh. Do they get to go to restaurants and the restaurant just flaunts all over them and gives them the best food and is that uh, how this is oh yeah they do and what, what they'll do is they'll go on the photo shoot the day that they're shooting the the pictures for the food there okay and they get to eat it they get to eat it yeah and it's great too. are you hiring because i will quit this job right <laughs> now i'll drop the microphone i want to be a food they're kind of like food critics right food writers yeah they are and then what's kind of fun is that if you read about a restaurant and the food that we present in the magazine uh -huh. then we have a cooking school that the chef comes out to construction appliance which is one of our clients and they've got okay. all the great appliances you know the sub-zero and yeah. wolf and the chef presents and cooks the meal right there and then we all get to eat it and drink wow. wine and it's great that's awesome yeah so you'll that's... have to come come to one yeah absolutely mm -hmm. That's, that has to be one of the best parts of the job. I mean, right? Because you can visually enjoy a space, but man, you can right. really taste some good food, I bet. Right. Yeah. And then Lorraine, she writes about the wine. Okay. You know? So yeah. it's all about food and wine. That's the <laughs> so, lifestyle part of the magazine. So she's at home drinking wine and her husband or partner or whatever is like, you're drinking wine again? She's like, I'm working. Yes, I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's a lifestyle section to the magazine too. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. it's not just about having a great looking house. You have to have kind of the lifestyle around it. Mm -hmm. I've been in two houses where I don't think I'm using the right word, but it's kind of like the minimalist look. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you go into their house and there's like a bed and there's like maybe a chair. And then, you know, their house is, I would consider it to be sort of sparse, right? Mm -hmm. Do you, what is that called minimalist or what is that called? Yeah, that's it. Usually that's it's contemporary. Contemporary. And I think the challenge there is to get some warmth uh -huh. into it because sometimes they can be a little cold a cold feeling right. but yeah that's where a designer a professional interior designer really comes in to play i'm just curious about this person i i really like the minimalist look you know mm -hmm. but i wonder how do they kind of practically apply that to their life you know does that person come home and kick their shoes off and throw their coat on the sofa and oh, you know yeah. like they're not doing that right what are, how does that person's life kind of different than well they tidy up their house before we come right you know, i oh, mean yeah. it, it looks the best it ever has you know when we come and then we come in with flowers but um no they they just like they just don't like clutter they want to simplify their lives and um so if you know, we go over to their house on a tuesday afternoon you don't think they have stuff sort of sitting around oh yeah they do they do is they there do. a closet somewhere that's just chock full of stuff uh we you very know? rarely see a messy closet you know <laughs> it's a kill to go into some of these houses and the the closets are so big and so beautiful and organized i guess that sort of plays into how much design has to sort of complement your personality mm -hmm. right because uh, my personality is I come in, kick off my shoes, you know, throw my coat on the sofa or whatever where where yesterday's coat is still sitting kind of thing, you know. 
But so my design, I might want something a little bit busier and more comfortable. Right. But I do have friends that they come home and their shoes go into the closet and their shirt goes into the, you know, this one of the many hampers they have and all their clothes are organized and they, that's just the way they live. I guess maybe they'd be better for the lifestyle. I well, was, you know what though? If you, if you're a little bit messy, uh-huh. I think in the mornings, like if you just take five minutes to just tidy up a little bit, yeah. you know, like throw the, throw the empty candy bar wrappers, you know, <laughs> off the coffee table and throw the soda can away right. or whatever. If you just say five minutes, I'm going to clean and I'm going to make my bed, then it looks pretty darn good when you come. It makes you feel good too. It really does. Mm-hmm. You know, and thanks mom. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> my mom is listening to this going, I taught him that. I taught him that because she did. She taught me that stuff. And you're right. When you come home, then you can have a more relaxing night than if you come home to kind of a mess and clutter. Yeah. And I think it simplifies your life too when you've got not too much clutter and you're organized and... Kind of give you a a peaceful at home, you know, experience or whatever. Well, you mentioned that one of the upcoming issues is going to be all about green. Mm -hmm. And I saw that you guys had some content about sustainability and repurposing. There's some solar stuff on there. Mm -hmm. This whole sustainability and repurposing stuff seems to be really big now. Are you noticing that too? Like the trend in that people using pallets to make shelves and all that kind of thing? Yeah, they really are. Everybody's trying to repurpose more and be more aware of the imprint that they're leaving on Mother Earth. Uh And then there's a lot of, and we've evolved too with the green, because now everyone tries to say that they're green. Right. You know, but there's different ways that you can go about it. Like if you're going to build or remodel to try to think of ways to um, keep your energy costs down, that's big. Um, Also use products that don't have the off gases, you know, because uh, green is also staying healthy too because there's all kinds of off gases from carpeting and okay um, there's just different things that you can do and the process that they made that they used to make them i guess that type of thing what's the right. difference between sustainability and i guess being green well green i think is a little bit it has just become cliche you know because all products now you can figure out a way that you can say that you're green right and sustainability would be more on you know just keeping your energy costs down recycling repurposing kind of change the way that you're living so that you don't throw things away that you're conscious about how you utilize products and treat the earth and so then with this repurposing thing are you seeing some of these higher end designers using repurposing are they buying old barn wood from places and stuff like that yeah just yesterday i saw a beautiful table that had been made and the the leg posts at each Uh end that was 200 year old oh, wow. barn wood holy cow yeah and so the top was um brand new and then the legs were this old and so apparently the new part was going to eventually age and match the look of the legs and that table was made by a local furniture designer here in town named uh, martin gobel Okay. And he makes a lot. And then if you go to his shop, he reclaims Uh um, all these. Like if somebody has to cut down a big tree, he'll go and just pick it up. And then he'll make tables and chairs. Wow, that seems like a cool job too. Oh, it's really really nice. And and it's great to walk into his shop because you just, you know, breathe in the... The wood. And so that's kind of what you're seeing, I guess, is the the barn wood seems to be the biggest thing. Yeah. I'm driving through the country now and I see an old barn. I'm like, oh man, that thing's worth a ton. Oh yeah. And people are trying to gobble them up. There's a bunch of them over in Illinois. Have you written anything yet about urban chicken farming? No, <laughs> no. But you know what? I went to a blog conference uh, last month and I was um, talking to a gal that blogs about chickens she does okay yeah yeah. i become a chicken fan yeah a couple weekends ago my girlfriend and i got chickens i live in the city we have only two you know the limit's four Mm -hmm. but we built a big chicken coop and all that type of thing yes painted it tried to make it look nice but it seems like that kind of just fits into the whole sustainability thing somehow you know yeah it does yeah you've got your own eggs it's green i guess yes yeah yeah we don't have any eggs yet the chickens are too young but we'll have them in about three months but Okay, I, I just think I, I love the urban chicken farming thing. You know, it's fun. Can really you have a rooster? Fun. You can't have a rooster, well, at least in the city. Okay. Well, then how do you get eggs? Well, I, I, <laughs> I feel weird saying this, but, you know, uh, just like a human woman makes eggs every month, mm-hmm. they're just not fertilized. Mm-hmm. Chickens are the same way. 
they make eggs all the time, but without a rooster, they're not fertilized. So I guess the, you know, actually I was talking to a realtor who's a vegan about this and Mm -hmm. I said, well, what is the problem with eggs? Because, you know, it's not really like hurting an animal when you get the eggs. We kind of got into a discussion about it, but I guess essentially we are taking the eggs. I don't know if it's before or after they have the chance to be fertilized, but I don't know exactly how it works to be honest with you, but, um, you know, we'll have to have a, a chemistry professor on here or something. To yeah, but that, that makes but sense though. Why, why are eggs um, that like, vegans can't eat eggs like, or right. that they don't eat eggs? And I think if they, if a vegan, maybe really a vegan person, I guess, really got into it, they might be comfortable with making some exceptions, you know, mm-hmm. but I can understand maybe why they wouldn't want eggs that came from some huge chicken factory somewhere where they're kind of mistreated, you know, but my little chickens are the best treated chickens in town. You well, know? I bet they're real cute too. <laughs> they're, they're loving life, you know. So <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to be in any sort of pain, you know. I am curious. You have a magazine. It's a paper magazine. And how has this whole internet thing affected your business? It looks like you guys have done a good job adding an internet section to your business, and you have ads on there and that type of stuff. But obviously, people are still reading magazines, right? There's mm-hmm. something about it. we just like to hold it and look at the pictures and that type of thing. Has it affected your business or did that happen before? No, we, I guess we, we were really worried, you know, back 10 years ago, you know, when it looked like everybody was going to go digital. Uh-huh. Um, it really hasn't hurt us because it is the experience. Right. Uh, just this morning I read an article about the goals of digital publications have just plummeted because we're learning that, just like you said, people want to hold it. It's more of an experience. You know? Yeah, and I would honestly rather pay a few dollars or whatever for the magazine and mm-hmm. hold it in my hands than I would probably go to a website mm-hmm. that was desperate to get money to the point where, you know, some of the websites you go to, you read six sentences and it's like, click next for the rest of the article. And then they serve you another ad and then you read another paragraph and then click next, you know, and you're like, come on, guys, just, you know, let me read the whole article here, you know, so that's good. I think that you, it sounds like you've taken a good approach to it, which is that, hey, we're going to have some online presence, but everyone still loves holding a magazine. Yeah, you you have to, you really have to do both. And just like we do a lot of social media also. And another thing that we are real dedicated to is local, that everything in the magazine, all the articles, everyone we feature is all local. local. So we're in my publisher's letter. I'm always saying buy local, buy local. Yes. Research on the web. But uh-huh. when you buy local, the money stays here. Okay. And you're supporting your local merchants. I mean, it would be terrible if we lost some shops because people were buying on the internet. And a problem that, that some of the stores have now is that people will come in and will, will want to find out they'll, they'll maybe fall in love with a chair. Uh-huh. And then they'll want to find out what brand it is, and then they'll go online and try to find buy out. it and bypass the you know it's like, the brick thank and you mortar. For using my company as a free showroom, exactly. Right? Yeah, like I'm really glad. this chair sits really nice and it fits my rear end nicely, so uh-huh. I think I'm going to buy this, but not for you. I think I'll go online and save five <laughs> percent. Right, it's just so wrong. Yeah, I think. You no, know? I think you're right. I think do your research, find out what you you know need to know, and go in as an educated consumer, but then buy local. And you know, and I don't know if this is true or not, but if you said to that store owner, "Hey, I'm thinking about going to Amazon and buying this for twenty bucks less," that store owner would probably say, "I will give you twenty dollars off or something." I don't know if they would or not, but well, maybe or maybe they could compromise. I know that I spoke to one interior designer and one of her clients that she was working with currently said that he found a chair or whatever Uh it was, a sofa online, and he was going to buy it that way instead of through her. And she said, okay, that's fine. But if you have a problem with, you know, the order, the delivery, wrong color, wrong wood, it's your problem, not mine. Mm -hmm. Sure enough, guess what happened? Problems. Problems. And he came to her and she went, hey. I told you. you. Uh, Yeah, because that's what you pay for, their expertise. It's well worth it. I get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you a little bit about design, Mm -hmm. as you are St. Louis's design queen. (laughs) I know you told me to call you that before we started the show. I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding. (laughs) Okay, so 
you know, I go into a lot of homes. As realtors, we go into lots and lots of homes. And actually, I'm going to change the order of my questions. I'm curious, in your opinion, does stainless steel like appliances, do they still reign as the king? Weren't they trying to bring in white appliances, sort of like shiny ones for a while? To Yeah, yeah they have. But I think that the stainless steel is... Still king. Yeah, Especially really now is. that they made it magnetic, I guess, and mm-hmm. all that kind of king. Yeah. What about granite? Is there something better than granite out there now? Well, no, granite is wonderful. It always has been. But with the sustainability and green movement, some people have been leaning towards the quartz. Quartz. Yes, okay. the quartz. And then also recycled uh, glass and stone. I mean, and then there's also paper countertops. What? I mean, they're, yeah, recycled paper, and it's real hard. And um, They put like a coating on it or something, I guess? Yeah, it doesn't look like paper, though. You know, it's like paper and something else and something else. But there's alternatives to granite. But granite still is just beautiful. It's beautiful. And, yeah. But I, I bought granite for my house, you know, a year ago or so. And I mm-hmm. thought it was funny because I bought the granite. And then they're like, okay, well, now, don't get citrus on it. And don't use any special cleaning products on it. I'm like... And these kind of like rules that come with granite. I'm like, right. well, I thought this was supposed to be granite. Like it's supposed to be hard and like durable, but it's not really as durable. Right. There And maybe there are, you're saying maybe is quartz more durable? Or? Oh, yeah. I've got a quartz you countertop. Quartz. Okay. Quartz and it is, everybody. No, but it, it it's just, you don't stain it. You can't hurt it. And it's um a little more green. Okay. Than granite, but granite is beautiful. But yeah, I mean, you can get different finishes to put on it, and yeah, you have, there you have a little more maintenance on it. Marble is one that I love. Marble, and I would love to have marble countertops, but it's not practical at all. So, granite is expensive, but marble is even more expensive. I think so, and is, and higher maintenance. Marble, like if oh, you have a family and you want. I mean, if if you have a beautiful kitchen and beautiful appliances, but you really don't cook in your kitchen, uh-huh. then you could have marble. But if you if you get some wine on the marble, it might stain it. Yeah, you have to immediately clean it up. What about quartz? Is it expensive or where, no, how does it's it compare a, to granite? It's about the same. You buy it at the same kind of places. Mm-hmm. What is, in your opinion, kind of the trendiest thing now? Like, what's the hottest thing going on right now? Well. well Acrylic, like acrylic chairs. Really? Uh, yeah. Okay. A couple of issues back, we did acrylic classic, or uh-huh. is it a craze? And uh, yeah, it's like been that. around. Yeah, it's the last page of our book, every issue. And acrylic is just really hot. It's been around forever. And about five or six years ago, we went into a home to, and we ended up featuring it was down at the Lake of the Ozarks. And I just called that whole style Elton John. Okay. It was just acrylic everywhere. I mean, they had. But acrylic is amazing. It's great in small spaces because uh-huh. if you get the clear and not a colored one, it, just like a glass table, it makes the space seem Feel bigger. bigger. Okay. And what, in your opinion, is going is trendy now or you know kind of popular now that in 10 years or so from now we're going to be thinking, what were we thinking? Which is what I think about when I see like old green countertops and brown you know countertops or whatever. But what do you think is like... What are we thinking right now, thinking? boy? Well, I think a lot of times it's the color of the year. Okay. You know, like um, right now the color is, um, I don't know, it's like a terracotta red. Uh-huh. You know, and you, I don't know, I always go with the color of the year thinking, okay, this is great. You know, you put a little pop of your that color uh-huh. in the home and it kind of updates and but you can quickly see down the road that you'll see something that, like if there's a terracotta sofa, you go, oh, well, I know when they bought that. Yeah. You know? When I, when, when I was still living with my parents before college, we had our basement finished and everything was kind of like this maroon color and this like forest green color. You oh, know? yeah. And now I see that, I'm like, oh, it looks like they redid their kitchen in 96. Yes. You know, or something like that, right? Oh, yeah. I guess, do you think there's something that's coming back? Like, are we about to be, are we now styling houses like we did in 96 or like we did in 80 or is this a totally new style now that we're on well i think there's always you know contemporary which is what is hot right now Mm -hmm. but right now there's a big movement towards the mid-century retro yes that's really hot right Mm -hmm. now and i think that furniture is like from the 40s 50s Uh era right and it's it's just beautiful and what's nice about it is you can incorporate a mid-century piece into a traditional 
environment or a contemporary or modern. Okay. And that's what's nice. I mean, that's something that's trending right now, and I think it's going to stick around is that no longer do you have everything that's matchy-matchy, like your whole house is traditional and you've got matching you know, lamps on each side right. of the sofa and the exact amount of pillows. But now it's like mix it up and whatever makes you happy. Okay, so that's kind of the now thing. It's, yeah. Everyone has their own style, but you don't have to have exactly like a set pattern, basically. Right. You can, whatever, you just want to make all your spaces, like instead of having maybe a formal living room that you don't use, mm-hmm. turn it into a study or turn it into a music room, something that you'll truly use. So, functionality is really important now. I'm curious about this formal living room thing, right? Mm-hmm. Because most of the people I'm working with now, they want everything open. You know, they want to be standing in the kitchen and be able to see the people watching TV and be able to see the people in the other rooms or whatever. Mm -hmm. And and then I guess I go into a lot of homes that are laid out with the formal living room, the formal dining room, and everything's kind of on its own. What do you think about those formal living rooms? Are they usable? Like, do people use those? Or I've seen them with plastic still on the furniture. Oh, yeah. Uh, Well, I think that... That floor plan is a classic, right? And you just have to, like, if you're selling one, uh-huh. then you just encourage the people to utilize that space and you show know? it for what it is. Yeah, don't, yeah, don't just have a room that just goes wasted. You know, use it. All right, so I'm going to jump into asking you my five questions that I ask everyone. Oh dear. Okay, and okay. they're not they're not so bad. <laughs> they're not so bad. Uh, just to get it, getting to know you a little bit. You know, okay. we've learned a lot about your magazine, St. Louis Homes and Lifestyles, and um, talked about interior decorating things. But I want to learn about Susie a little bit, if I might. So, who lives under your roof? Uh, my husband, okay. and we'll be uh, we're going to be celebrating our fortieth anniversary. Wow! I know. Congratulations. Thanks. You going to do anything fun? Well, we're trying to plan a trip, a really nice trip. Uh huh. But we're not there yet. We're thinking about it. You probably kind of have to get out of town because you've already been to all the coolest restaurants and you've already seen all the coolest spaces, right? It's like, let's yeah. go somewhere else. Yeah, I think it's healthy to take a break and get away from r- your routine. All right. And so you no know pets or anything, I guess? Oh, yes. I have a standard red poodle that's um, 11 years old and she goes to work with me every day. As okay. a matter of fact, she's at work right now. Okay. And... Um, she loves going to work. You could have brought her here. I love dogs. Oh, I should have. Yeah, she lo- and I have two kids. I have a son, Tim, and I have a daughter, Sadie. Are they both going to grow up and be working at the magazine? No. Tim has his own business. Um, he installs window tent. His business is called Metro Tent, and they go in and put the tent on the window so that uh-huh. it uh, blocks the sunlight and also doesn't stain the furnishings or the floors. That's cool. Fade. You know, Where's his fades. company? He he works out of his home and but he goes into homes and just puts it up. Interesting. I always thought of tent being just what people put on their car. Right. But I do have, again. I have a listing now where they they're like, oh, the windows are tinted. I'm like, that's an interesting idea. Oh yeah, it's it's wonderful because it protects your artwork, your uh-huh. furnishings, your rugs, and your hardwood floors. And I guess it's kind of fits the whole green thing too because it probably like room stays cooler in the summer type of thing. Yes, it does. All right. So you're just a green family. Yeah. And then my daughter is a circus performer. What? Yes. What does she do? She owns a runaway circus out of Asheville, North Carolina, and she is a trapeze artist. Oh, my gosh. And she sings, dances, and plays four or five instruments. Right now, she's down in West Palm Beach taking more classes on trapeze and actually teaching. Okay, so at the circus, they have the people who have, I guess, incredible sort of physical skills, Mm -hmm. trapeze, that type of thing. That's what your daughter does. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other people there who are like swallowing swords. No, none of those, but jugglers. Uh You know, it's a little bit more like a little version of Cirque du Soleil, Uh you know, real boutique-y and lots of singing and dancing. And then they also, a lot of vaudeville. Okay. And then they also have camps for children. And they go into elementary schools and teach the wow. kids. It's kind of um, those children that maybe don't excel in organized sports right. do really well in circus arts, they okay. call it. And then they're, it's kind of trending right now yeah. because it gives children um, confidence and they have fun. And and there's more, there's more out there for kids that don't just want to play football. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Well, you know, here in town, down at City Museum, they've got a great circus. Oh. group 
I didn't know. Mm-hmm. See, I learned something new. That's mm-hmm. what these podcasts are all about. Yeah. Okay, where are you your best? Probably just out and about and talking to people and having fun, going out with friends, traveling. I okay. just like to have a good time, really. Good. <laughs> I love that. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, I think you have the perfect job for it, right? Because everyone has a reason to have you at their events and to mm-hmm. have you to their restaurant. And it's like, this is mm-hmm. great. You've built yourself into a really cool position, I think. Do you have a favorite blog that you read or podcast? Or Well, I do have a good friend that has a wine blog. It's called oh. Wine Zag wine, that I follow. W-I-N-E-Z-A-G uh-huh. dot com? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and uh, he just talks about all the great wines. And um, if you're having this for dinner, then this is a great wine oh, cool. to drink with that. And he does that on the side, but he is always drinking great wine. Okay. Yeah. Good. And it does make a difference, you know, when what you're having for dinner, if you have a glass of wine that complements your meal. Mm-hmm. Right. It just makes it taste all that much better, just like a great dessert. Uh, what is your guilty pleasure? <laughs> oh, gosh. Guilty pleasure. I don't know, probably just watching Marathon House of Cards. Okay. You know, House I'm, of Cards? Loved it. That's not a decorating show. No. Well, no. I just have you to. You need a break you know, sometimes. Yeah. You just got to do something something totally different. Okay. When you just go home and take your shoes off and watch some House of Cards. Okay. Well, you deserve it. Yeah. And who is your mentor and how have you thanked them? Oh, I would say my mentor was a, um, a gal in publishing. She was the publisher and, and still is of Atlanta Homes and Lifestyles. And okay. I learned a lot from her and just admire the way she goes about business and customer service and her name is jenna christensen she's lived of course she's in atlanta so you met her just through your dealings with when this company was still a big company owned yes actually she came up from atlanta and helped us start st louis homes and lifestyle magazine and she was the publisher and i was a sales rep there oh, and wow. i had i had no idea that they were teaching me to be a publisher they were um, grooming me grooming you that's right yes and so she was your mentor how have you thanked her oh. or maybe you haven't i don't know oh no i have just verbally i write her little notes tell her she's wonderful you do. yeah and i've gotten up in big meetings and said that she was my mentor and she just gets all That's embarrassed good. you know but yeah she yeah. appreciates it i'm sure yeah and i'm sure your dog is wanting you to get back to her so we'll let you go okay i appreciate it very much thanks for coming on the show and we look forward to everyone listening to next week's podcast we'll have more guests more great information and more content for you so thanks for listening and take care